With your first news at 6 Sports, here's Luke Campbell. With well, State Soccer Week in North Dakota, the Legacy Sabres enter the tournament as a three seed as they make their fifth consecutive state appearance. It's a familiar feeling for a team that's been there before, but the Sabres continue to strive to make it one step further after falling in the championship last season. Coming in third, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm glad to be here again. And every year it's super, super exciting. Everybody's pumped. State's a different atmosphere. Every team brings a lot of intensity and you know, more to fight for. I think we're playing uh, good soccer going into it. We can't be disappointed being a three seed. We're going to the state tournament. Uh, could we have been, could we have done better? Absolutely, we had an up and down season, but it, we're not disappointed we're going to the state tournament. Well, the Sabres play the final game of the night tonight in Grand Forks with a win. They'll advance to the semifinals tomorrow. Here's the scores from the first two games of the day. West Fargo defeats Williston in the Coyotes' first ever state appearance. And Minot moves on with a 2-0 win over Red River. Napoleon Gackle Streeter football is entering the final week of the regular season. The Imperials are led by a senior class of seven players. And as Ben Dacu tells us, one of them is making a mark that's much bigger than the X's and O's. Oh. Napoleon Gackle Streeter's senior players have been playing together since they were kids. Their starting wide receiver and safety has won multiple state titles in wrestling. I've been playing ever since fifth grade. Her name is Alexis. So I guess they kind of got used to me being there. And then we've just been able to grow closer as a team. She's one of us. It's nothing new. It's even like during elementary recess, she was always there playing with us. So She's as hard-nosed as it gets. It doesn't matter. Boy, girl, um, it, that, she doesn't let that bother her. Um, she's another one of the boys when she's on the field. As a part of the Imperial defense, Alexis doesn't shy away from contact. Oh yeah, I like it. And being the only girl um, allows me to just want to work harder so I can represent the other girls. Other girls who want to play football but don't have enough courage to just step up and see that it is possible. Ball returned by number five, Alexis Schneider. Um, she just doesn't let anything stop her. She's going to try her best at everything. and. Um, we're going to we count on her in big moments all the time. We're not going to we're not going to shy away from it. She's always had the attitude of she doesn't want anybody to be better than her. She's she doesn't like giving up points. She's just she's a wrestler. She's she's tough. In case you were wondering how Alexis started wrestling and playing football, blame her siblings. They started football and I just wanted to join in. That's the same with wrestling. Um, both sports I got drug into by my brothers and I love both of them. So. The Imperials will play their final regular season game this Friday against New Salem Almont. For your news leader, I'm Ben Dacu. Well, today brings big news for the Minnesota Twins organization. The Polad family has announced their intent to explore selling the Minnesota Twins. The family has owned the team since 1984. Executive Chairman Joe Polad saying in part in a statement today, quote, we truly respect and cherish what the Twins mean to Minneapolis, St. Paul, the great state of Minnesota, and this entire region. After four decades of commitment, passion, and countless memories, we are looking toward the future with care and intention for our family, the Twins organization, and this community we love so much." End quote. So some changes coming in Minneapolis. And we just hope they stay That's where right. they are. All right, we'll be right back after this.